Once the student has a reasonable knowledge of each instrument and has understood the basic concepts of orchestration that we've already discussed in this course, then it's time to practice. Practice orchestration, however, we need music to orchestrate. But if that also implies composing music for orchestra, we're faced with a problem. How to compose for orchestra without any experience composing for orchestra? The most common answer is to arrange existing music for orchestra, usually starting from standard repertoire pieces for piano. This has several advantages. We can start with music that already is well organized harmonically and formally, and also there are existing models. For example, to orchestrate a Mozart piano sonata, we can look at Mozart's own orchestral works as models. And we can do the same with other styles of orchestration. A very useful preliminary exercise for this kind of transcription is to first reduce existing orchestral scores for the piano. I won't go into detail about this here since I've already discussed it on my website. You can find the link underneath this video. The reason this is a useful exercise is that it forces you to understand the reasons behind what you see and hear in the existing orchestration. As an example, since the orchestra has no pedal, you sometimes see long, static held notes, say in the horns. These notes are there to provide resonance, and therefore there's no need to transcribe them literally into a piano version of the same music. Another example, the composer may have added some doublings to reinforce an accent. Although they may not be playable on the piano, sometimes it suffices just to mark an accent in the piano score. The key point here is to understand why the composer has orchestrated the music in a given way. A good orchestrator doesn't just make random decisions, there are good reasons behind them. Once you understand the real reason for a given arrangement, you'll more easily find a pianistic equivalent. Essentially, both reducing an orchestral score and orchestrating an existing piece, say for piano, are exercises in translation. And, as in translating from one language to another, you need to translate the meaning, not the individual words. So, for an orchestral transcription, a good orchestrator will ask, if the composer had orchestrated this piece themselves, how would they have conceived it? The answer to this question leads to a convincing orchestration that makes musical sense, rather than just a note-for-note -note transcription. There are certain very salient things that should not be changed in producing or orchestrating an existing piece. The main melodic line, the bass line, the harmony, and the rhythmic momentum. The original registral planning should also be considered, although thinking for orchestra sometimes requires doublings outside the original range. Things that can be freely changed as needed are the accompaniment figuration and the voice leading in the accompanying harmony. Let's prepare to orchestrate an example, the exposition in the first move of the Mozart's Piano Sonata in C major, K309. First, let's listen to it. Before we start orchestrating, here are things we need to notice in the original and then to carefully rethink in orchestral terms. 1. Changes in dynamics and accent markings. 2. New themes or motives that change the music's character. 3. Pianistic accompaniment figures and also places where the figuration changes. 4. Big gaps between the hands, the spacing. and 5. Important formal contrasts. 
Now let's go through the piano score in detail, looking for these things. In our next lesson, we'll do the same with orchestral version. Measure 1 is clearly meant as a rich, full sound. What about that arpeggio at the start? What was Mozart's intention here? Answer, to create an accent on the first beat. In measure 2, the lowest octave suddenly disappears, changing the texture. In measure 3 to 5, the accompaniment could conceivably play with pedal. If we wanted to reflect that in the orchestration, how would we do it? Measure 7 has a change of texture in the left hand. After the repeated material in measures 8 to 12, the music takes a new turn in measure 13. Also, the chromatic chord is accented with a sforzando. How can we realize that accent in the orchestra? Another contrast follows in measure 15. It alternates between forte and piano. Again, the orchestration should reinforce the dynamic changes. After that phrase is repeated, in measure 1 we have a new theme, alternating accented chords with a lighter rising phrase. There's also a new accompaniment figuration, so we need a fairly salient orchestral contrast here. In measure 27, the figuration changes again. And again, we have those little arpeggios in the right hand for accent, reinforced by its forzando. In measure 31, the texture is just doubling one part of the octave. Should we add other doublings here, or resonance? Measure 33 begins a new section, the second theme, in G major. This needs to be a fairly major orchestral contrast. Should we include pedal resonance? When the phrase repeats in measure 39, should we vary the orchestration? In measure 43, the left hand really has two layers. The low notes constitute the bass line. The other notes are really a middle part. How should we distribute these layers in the orchestra? Also, the pedal would probably sustain the harmony here. Measure 48 is once again a change of texture, with accents that we'll need to realize orchestrally. The figuration in measure 52 to 3 in the left hand is not idiomatic for orchestral instruments. It also includes both the bass line and the middle parts, and the hands are quite far apart. This would sound very empty if transcribed as is. Once again, there's a change of texture in measure 54, followed by another in measure 56. Notice the gap between the hands from measure 56 on. Again, it'll just sound empty, so we need to fill in the texture. Also, the right hand figuration jumps between two octaves, creating a kind of dialogue of registers. Finally, the last two chords in measure 58 are clearly meant to be loud and full. We do something comparable in the orchestra and those arpeggio marks are, once again, a kind of accent. The above list shows you the kinds of things you need to consider when orchestrating an existing piece. And as we can see, we're very far from just transferring all the notes in the piano score into orchestral instruments. If we want to make our orchestration really convincing, we need to rethink all these things in ways that are idiomatic for the orchestra. In our next lesson, we'll propose an orchestral version that addresses all these issues.